In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can calculate the debt to equity ratio for a company using a balance sheet. So let's start by looking at the basic formula. So debt to equity ratio is simply the ratio of the total liabilities divided by the total stockholders equity. Or in other words, we're basically doing all of the money the company owes divided by all of the money that's been put in by the owners of the company. And this is going to give us a measure of how reliant the business is on debt and can also tell whether there's too much equity and perhaps they have capacity to take on more debt. And it's also a risk measure to some extent. So let's look at a balance sheet. So we've got the balance sheet from a company called Realty Income, very popular real estate investment trust, and it files a Form 10K. The good thing about Form 10K is it's set out in a really clear way that's quite easy to pick out our value. So you have to have some care and caution here. So you've got the debt to equity ratio formula there. We can immediately see that the total liabilities is given there. So you've got the dividends that haven't been paid out yet, things like accounts payable. That's money that they are going to be paying to other people at some point. So it's not their money, it's money they need to pay out. And then you've got various categories of loans and liabilities. And they're all added up for you. So we take that number and then we have to get the total stockholders equity. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing. There is a line that says total stockholders equity, but that's not the one that we're going to use. We're going to use the total equity. So the SEC and their definition of debt to equity and generally the accepted definition of, of debt to equity includes non-controlling interest because they are equity capital in the company. So we're going to include that. And so you do the division. So you substitute in your total liabilities on the top. You take your total equity and you put it on the bottom. You calculate that and it gives you a debt to equity of 0 0.89. So this means that there is 0 0.89 cents or 89 cents of debt for every dollar of equity. Sometimes it's helpful to present it in a percentage. So this is saying that there is a debt to equity percentage of 89%. And we now need to think about how you actually interpret this number. And we'll look at it in terms of the decimal value. So this is a general rule of thumb and you have to analyze the company individually. Different companies are perfectly safe, perfectly, well, not safe, they're perfectly reasonable at much higher debt to equity ratios than some other companies. So as a rule of thumb, something that's lower than 0.5 is generally low risk. You're not going to be worried just because of the debt to equity. If, if something's going to worry you, it's going to be somewhere else. A debt to equity of less than 0.5 suggesting that perhaps the company is over financing their business with equity and are overly cautious and their returns are going to be lower because the cost of debt is so much lower than the cost of equity. Less than one is fairly reasonable. You're not going to be setting off alarm bells. One to two is typical for a lot of businesses. Once it starts to go more than two, you want to proceed with a little bit of caution. You want to be considering the trend. Is it getting worse? Are they leveraging up? If a company is loss making with a debt to equity of over two, you're going to start to get really worried. If it's more than five, you want to proceed with great caution. So you'll be looking for special cases. For example, banks, by the way that they operate, just have higher debt to equity ratios because banks are financed by borrowing money from one set of people and lending it out at a higher rate. And utility companies that have very sustainable cash flows, things like electricity generation companies that have got monopoly positions, power distribution, and water companies, they can survive with very high debt to equity because they have very guaranteed, very stable cash flows. And so that's not going to worry you so much. Whereas a cyclical business, like an airline with a debt to equity of more than five, would really be a no-go. So there's some general rules of thumb, but it is very company specific and you have to do your analysis and use this as one of many tools in understanding the financial position of a business. So hopefully this, this video has been very helpful to you. And finally, thank you very much for watching.